a preload space of more than 9 inches will cause excessive wear and stress on the tools. Always oil to the tool's pivot points each time the tool is adjusted. Now that we know how to make connections, let's talk about other general installation practices. Zernpex tubing comes in coils or straight lengths. Most installers use straight lengths unless they have very long runs. There is no other difference in the tubing. Zernpex tubing is flexible. It can be curved around obstacles and many times can eliminate the need to use an elbow fitting. When you bend Zernpex tubing, the minimum radius is six times the outside diameter of the tube. Tighter bends will place excessive strain on the tube and will eventually cause kinks. If you're using coil tube and you're bending against the curvature of the tube, the minimum bending radius is 18 times the outside diameter of the tube. Sharper bends require the use of Zern elbows. When you're making bends at a fitting, the tube should be strapped or fastened to prevent strain of the fittings. Cross-length polyethylene tube hung from rafters or floor joists should be supported every 32 inches. If it's continuously supported on a surface like the top of a ceiling joist, the straps can be as far apart as 6 feet. Vertical runs of Zern pecs should be supported at every floor level. Cross-length polyethylene, like other piping materials, expands and contracts as the temperature changes. This expansion or contraction is one inch for every 100 feet of tube for each 10 degrees of temperature change. Since Zernpex is flexible, it's easy to allow for this expansion and contraction by cutting the tubing longer than the measured distance you have to cover. Allow an additional 1 8 inch per foot. This gives plenty of slack so the tubing won't pull on the joints as it contracts when the weather gets cold. On long runs, this slack can be built in via either loops or S-bends with a 12 inch offset. In some parts of the country where slab-on grade construction is common, cross-linked polyethylene is run under the slab to various locations in the house. In this situation, be sure to use continuous lengths of cross-linked polyethylene so there won't be any fittings under the slab. If the soil is rocky, put sand or pea gravel in the trench before the tube is installed. The tube should be snaked from side to side in the trench to allow for contraction as it cools. In rocky soil, the tube should be covered in sand or pea gravel. When you turn the cross-linked polyethylene tube to come up through the slab, it must be sleeved where it passes through the concrete. This protects it from potential abrasion. Use sleeves or bushing from the tube when it penetrates metal studs. Bushings are not required when penetrating wood or particle board when the hole is at least one eighth inch larger than the tube and the tube is not very restricted. Zern pecs, like copper or other plastics, can be punctured by a nail. For this reason, the tube should be protected with a steel plate if it's within two inches of a nailing surface on a stud, plate, or joist. When you're connecting to household water heaters, use Zern pecs 18 inch flexible copper connectors or 18-inch metal pipes to run between the water heater and the cross-link polyethylene tube on both the inlet and outlet of the water heater. Zernpex has a number of other special purpose fittings designed for your convenience. For example, our copper stub-out elbows have their ends spun closed to allow for easy pressure testing of the system. On finish, the end is cut off and a regular compression stop can be used. Threaded drop ear elbows are used if you want to stub out with a pipe nipple and they are used at silcock valves. For washing machine connections, we have a special brass washer box valve that has a mounting nut and a crimp connection on the inlet. We also have a bulkhead fitting with one half inch nail iron pipe threads allowing you to use the valve of your choice. In addition to these special fittings, we have a variety of fittings that allow easy transitions from cross-link polyethylene to either male or female iron pipe thread connections. We also have swivel fittings for those locations where fixture replacement may be necessary. Zern has a full line of either plastic or brass supply stops with a variety of inlet and outlet configurations. Zern also has a line of cross-link polyethylene supply tubes. 
These tubes come with combs formed on the end of the tube for a permanent connection. Combs suitable for faucets or ball cock valves are available, and the tubes come in a variety of lengths. Never use a plain end cross-link polyethylene tube in friction or slip connections at a faucet or ball cock valve because it will blow out. For main shutoff valves, we have ball valves with insert ends for crimp installation in a cross-link polyethylene line. When you have the Zernpex system roughed in, we recommend a pressure test. First, fill the system with water. Pressurize it to 200 PSI. Then hold that pressure for two hours. After this process, inspect the installation for leaks. Cut out any fitting with a leak. If for some reason you can't perform the recommended test, the test pressure should be at least the normal system working pressure, but not less than 40 PSI. The test time should be at least 15 minutes. The Zerm Manifold system enables you to install systems with fewer connections and provides a system that saves water by delivering hot water faster. Always select a manifold that has more branches than you require. In general, manifolds should be installed in an accessible location, very near the water heater. Zernpex may be installed directly to electric water heaters for residential plumbing applications. Zernpex has male and female threaded adapters and swivel adapters that can be used for this application. Zernpex must be kept six inches away from the exhaust vent of a gas-fired water heater. This is easily accomplished by using flexible water heater connectors. The cold water manifold may be located in any convenient location, but it's usually located near the hot water manifold or the incoming water supply. Manifolds may be mounted in a horizontal or vertical position. Vertical mounting can only be used if the bending radius of all tubes is greater than the minimum recommended radius of eight times the tube's outside diameter. Cross-link polyethylene can be cut by sharp objects, such as broken glass, nails, or sharp edges on metal. Since it's lightweight, we recommend carrying the tubing instead of dragging it around the job site. Never use tubing that is cut or gouged. Never run cross-link polyethylene in the same stud cavity as a gas appliance vent or closer than six inches to a gas appliance vent in an attic. Also, don't install cross-link polyethylene tube within 12 inches of a recessed light fixture. Finally, when making sweat and insert transitions to copper, always make the sweat connection first and let the metal cool down before making the crimp connection to Zernpex. A properly installed cross-link polyethylene system will look different than a copper system because they are different materials. But a properly installed system in any material is a job to be proud of. This information is also contained in the Zernpex Professional Plumbing Guide. We recommend keeping a copy handy for reference. That's Zernpex, the plumbing system that's building the future. Trouble-free and freeze-resistant, Zernpex is working hard to give you the competitive advantage. For more information, please call 1-800-872-7277. In Canada, please call 905-405-8272. Please visit our website at www.zern.com.